We'll get to the tweets shortly. Um, here with the um, Honorable Minister of Education, uh, Professor Tahir Maman. Thank you so much for staying in the course on the program. Uh, let's talk about the student loan uh, very shortly. Uh, we've started seeing letters from some universities acknowledging payments of funds in this regard. Precisely, how many students have benefited thus far from the initiative? And what's this government's goal in the next three years? Well, at the moment, we have, uh, as I, the, the report that I have is as of as three days ago, we have over 200,000 students who have uh, applied with 44 billion committed to those applications. And then institutions, uh, about 21 billion committed to institutions that have uh, where these students are. And um, I don't have the exact figure on how many of them have, uh, have been credited, but uh, two-thirds of them have successful applications, which means uh, that, type of, that amount of money we are talking about is already committed to the students. The beauty of the student loan is that the process is seamless and very smooth. All the student needs to have is jam registration and um, his name and then identification that he's a student of the university and the uh, Polytechnic College of Education of course now and then he will have um, access to the facility there's no quota whatsoever and mm. uh, so students who apply now are getting the money without any hindrance or hindrance is it true that nail fund is considering increasing the student loan stipends, uh, which is currently 20,000 error, uh, due to economic realities? I cannot confirm that for certain. Uh, it hasn't come to me as a proposal, so we work with what is on ground at the moment, but we don't mm. uh, discount that possibility. So we saw you reverse um, the ban on underage admission uh, we're hearing that that is to be enforced in 2025. What issues do we have with 16-year-olds in our universities? Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's no issue, really. Uh, what we said is just to remind the public of existing policy. We, are not, we didn't bring in new policy, and that is a practice in many, many jurisdictions across uh, the world. If you look at the trajectory for school uh, for age in Nigeria. Um, Pre-primary school, they are supposed to go to school at the age of five or six, and then spend uh, uh, six years there. And then basic education overall is nine. You add to you add the five or six to each. You have already. Uh, uh, 13 or 14 and then by the time you add up uh, the three years for secondary school you have 17 and a half years so it's a very simple arithmetic and what has been the problem is parents jumping uh, schools and jumping uh, class years and you know from what we or what has been established actually even medically you know students are going to schools premature in terms of age you know have problem managing their affairs coping with academic life our own minister it's hard to tell you know? it's hard to say that a 16 year old is premature in this age and time if you are conversant oh, yes, with how yes. exposed you know people have become recently but, but we don't have as much time to yeah. talk about that now we'll continue this conversation yeah. later on let me let, let me read some tweets for you and so we can get your response to what many of our viewers are concerned about. This person says, the Honorable Minister suspended accreditation of degree certificates from Niger Republic, Bene and Togo, but later exempted Niger Republic. The growing rumor is that the exemption was a professional treatment to Maryam Abacha University. That's from uh, at AKT Oracle. And then Omar is saying, regarding students from Bene and other countries, when is the matter going to be settled? It's eight months now since the ban on NYSE. 
uh, enrollment was placed while three months was actually set for the issue. Adebi Samson is saying, kindly ask the Minister of Education the current status and the fate of students that studied in Benin and Togo. We've waited enough. Please, this is over seven months. We need an answer. The ban is affecting a lot of our lives. Honorable Minister, this is making reference to the suspension of um, evaluation and accreditation of certain schools earlier in the year uh, following consents of certificate mills. A, a government decided to embark on an investigation that has long ended. What is the update? How do you address these concerns? Well, I start by clarifying, clarifying the issue on Niger. Niger was never part of it. Uh, so there was no question of uh, uh, lifting the ban on, on Niger. Uh, the focus from the beginning was on Benin, Togo, and uh, some other, uh, essentially Benin and Togo. Now, the report has been submitted. The Federal Executive Council has actually approved the recommendations from the Ministry and uh, we will have a press conference tomorrow where the details will be uh, laid out. And the Federal Executive Council has approved uh, implementation of that report where uh, graduates from institutions that have no official approval in those countries will not be recognized, are pro not just not be recognized, but actually they are prohibited uh, in Nigeria. And uh, they will be fished out if they are already in service uh, of any government or any major agency. And uh, as I said, tomorrow we are going to provide the details of uh, the institutions, relevant institutions in, the, in those countries, and even the number. But by and large, uh, from Togo, we have close to or about 21,000 students who uh, graduated from those institutions between 27, 2017 uh, to the time of the investigation, and about 1,000 plus from uh, Togo. So those students or graduates in court, we know, will not have recognition in Nigeria. And uh, so if they did any service, that one will be... Uh, disqualified, disqualified, and then uh, if they are in any employment in Nigeria, then uh, they will be fished out because they are bringing in qualifications which are illegal, even in those countries, not to talk about Nigeria. But as I said, some more details will come out tomorrow when we we'll do our uh, press conference. Are you suggesting the possibility of lifting the ban on these universities tomorrow? No, we are not lifting ban on any institution because they are illegal institutions in the first place. Even in those countries, we are, uh, they are running. Uh, so we don't even have the power to lift the ban on them. We cannot recognize what is illegal here uh, in Nigeria. Even universities in Nigeria that produce um, certificates that are fake, we, they, they are fake in this country, they are recognized as such. Um, and not to talk about institutions across the border that don't have... No, no, no. Honorable Minister, right just to get some clarity, yes. because, you know, we reported this earlier on in the year, and I remember raising it with the Honorable Minister of State. There was a document that was widely published, you know, uh, uh, the, it was claimed to have been sourced from the ministry, that after that investigation was carried out, you were able to highlight the accredited universities in these countries. Can you share more light on that? Are you saying all of the schools are not accredited and all of them are fake? No. No, 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 not all of them. Those countries have universities which are recognized. They have, of course, two, those institutions which are not recognized. Some are just set up for international students, really, and uh, by their proprietors and without approval of the national governments. And, and that's why even in those countries, as I said, they are not recognized universities, even in those countries. So we can't recognize them here. But they have their own institutions which uh, are recognized, and we'll provide the detail All tomorrow right. in our... 
in the press conference. Our Minister, we have to go now. Hopefully you would return and continue this conversation. But let me just inform you also that one of the concerns raised here are from students under the Nigeria Bilateral Education Agreement. And they've been talking about 14 months stipends owed them in countries like Hungary, Morocco, China, Serbia, Algeria, 